Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Moving up with the McClets. Moving on up. Mm -hmm. And here we are for part two of our higher education series. If you watched part one, then you caught a little bit of the history or the background of us going into making the decisions of going to a four-year university or a junior college. And today, what are we talking about in part two? So today, we're going to be touching on our experiences once we got to the four year mm. or the junior college mm. um, and kind of just giving a little bit of details in regards to living arrangements, classes, okay. jobs, the social aspect and you know what we liked or disliked about our experience. So I'm gonna let you start off today. Okay, that is fine. If you watch the first video, I went directly to a four year university, uh, San Jose State, go Spartans, say! I actually lived on campus in you, one of the original dorms. They only had like three left, I believe. The bricks. Yeah, lived in the bricks. The bricks. Um, and I must admit, when I first like rolled up, I was like, what is this <laughs> mess? Real talk. What is this? That is oh. that is very true. Anyways, but I, I quickly got used to it and I ended up having two other roommates in a little tiny box. But I love my roommates. That They're still like to this day and it's been 16 years, you know, since 16? How much <laughs> it's been like 20. Sorry, I'm thinking about when I graduated. It's been about 20 <laughs> graduated years. Graduated 16 years yeah. ago. So yeah, about 20 years. And I, I still talk to those people. Still talk to my old roommates. Still talk to my, you know, one of them is my best friend. Lived in the dorms freshman year, sophomore year. It was still campus housing, mm -hmm. uh, but it was off campus. And we had to take the shuttle bus to the campus in order to go to class. It's called Spartan Village. Spartanville, 152. Yeah. What up, baby? <laughs> I see you. I don't even remember what number <laughs> what number I lived in, but you know Spartan Village. It was, yeah, it was. I'll just say it was a mess. It was the a fun Ville. hot mess. The bill. <laughs> yes, junior year we moved to an apartment literally across the street from campus. Me and my mm -hmm. my uh, two roommates from freshman year, and then senior year I lived by myself, courtesy of my pops. For me, it was very different. <laughs> <laughs> I was already living with my grandparents my senior year of high school. Um, and unfortunately, my grandfather passed away that year. Um, in fact, he passed away two months before I graduated from high school. And at that point, I had already made the decision that I was going to stay local and that I was going to go to a junior college uh, there mm -hmm. in Lompoc. Uh, in fact, it was Allen Hancock College which was in Santa Maria. However, they had uh, satellite campuses, several of them being in Lompoc. Because my grandfather had passed um, and some other stuff that was going on, it made sense for me to actually stay at home and live with my grandmother uh, for a number of different reasons. I could have found an apartment, moved out. I could have lived with friends. I could have done a number of different things, but I selected to stay at home because that's what was actually best for me. That was what was best for my grandmother and I at that time. For me, living at home with my grandmother was really helpful because it allowed me to go to work, it allowed me to earn money, and it allowed me to basically live rent-free. Mm -hmm. So for me, living with my grandmother, being that I was living there rent-free, um, it allowed me to save money and knowing that I had this plan in a two to three year window of eventually transferring to a university at some point, not knowing which one it was going to be at that time. After three years, I transferred to San Jose State University and unlike Cherie, I did not live in the bricks. I did not live in the little tiny dorms. I actually moved in to Spartan Village. So that was beneficial for a number of different reasons. It gave me the independence that I was seeking. It gave me the opportunity to live with people that I did not know. It gave me a chance to meet individuals for the very first time and develop relationships. But it was challenging, right? Because you're living with other people who you don't know anything about. You don't know their habits. You don't know their hygiene. You don't know anything about their personalities. Mm -hmm. You don't know anything about their interests. And thankfully, thankfully that first year, uh, I was able to meet three dudes that were real cool. We got along well, and just so happens that I'm still great friends with my roommate, 
who also I met 21 years ago, mm -hmm. um, this year actually, 21 years ago, who I'm still really good friends with today. And for me, that was a great experience. Yeah, it had its ups and downs at certain times, especially when you start getting different people that move in and out. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like one year you may have this roommate, another mm -hmm. year you have a different roommate. This year you have a completely different roommate. You know, that yeah. part was tough uh, getting used to. But again, you have no choice but to do it. You know, you just, you just do it, you know? And you go into it with an open mind and open perspective. We had some fun. <laughs> <laughs> we had some fun. All we, right. we definitely hosted our share of parties mm -hmm. in the apartment because Spartan Village wasn't a little tiny dorm. They were actual apartments, yeah. you know, two bedroom apartments with a living room and a kitchen. kitchen. We had a little backyard. We had a good time. We, we Backyard? Yeah, we had a little patio, a back a back patio. Oh, Ours did. Okay. I don't know about some of them other ones, but well, we, we had a little... We were on the second floor. We had a balcony. Okay, well, there you go. But you make it seem like it was like a backyard. No, It was we... literally like three feet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you stand outside and that's about it. It was some concrete <laughs> and some grass. All right, so now we're going to touch on the classes. Uh, so since you, you know, were at a, a junior college first. Mm -hmm. How were your classes, you know? What I loved about college was the fact that you can set up your schedule the way you want it to be. And from the moment I graduated high school, I was working anywhere between 20 to 30 hours, if not 35 hours a week. So for me, being able to schedule my classes around my work schedule helped me out significantly. Um, I was able to still work. I was able to go to class. Uh, take the required classes for my AA, take my general ed classes. And again, like I said, I, although I got, you know, a two year degree in three years, for me, that's what it was. And that's because in certain semesters, you run into a situation where you may have a class that's offered in the winter, mm. but not offered in the summer. Yeah. Or you may have a class that's offered in the fall, but not in the winter. And that actually happened to me. Um, I got stuck with classes that were not offered in one semester versus another. Mm. And that's what actually kept me at Allen Hancock College for three years versus two. Oh, okay. Allen Hancock College main campus is in Santa Maria. That's 30 minutes away from Lompoc where I grew up and where I was living. Mm -hmm. So I made sure that I took as few classes as possible in Santa Maria on the main campus and took yeah. as many classes as possible closer to where I lived. When I transferred to San Jose State, same thing. I had to I had to schedule my classes around my work schedule. For some people, you may not have to do that. You know, for some people who choose not to work while they're mm -hmm. at a university or choose to work very little, you're able to schedule your work schedule around your classes. Whereas for me, I had to do the opposite. Yeah. I scheduled my classes around my work schedule. And thankfully, I was able to work at different employers that were flexible, for the most part, uh, were flexible with my schedule and provided me the opportunity. You know, night classes, I took hella night classes, man. <laughs> God, I hate For those. reals, yo. I took hella night classes. Anything from a 6 o'clock class or a 6.30 class, not getting out till 9 o'clock or 9.30 at night after working all day. That is tiring, mm -hmm. especially when it's a long, boring class. <laughs> Shit. When you start, they have what are called placement tests. Mm -hmm. um, and unfortunately, it's, it's regarding either uh, your math and your English. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, you know, you may not have hit the threshold on yeah. for where they would go ahead and place you in, you know, your English or your math test and you have to take what is called remedial courses, mm -hmm. which do not count towards your mm -hmm. units taken, by mm -hmm. the way. Let me just tell you that From now. Degree. So yeah, if, if when you do your placement test, please try your hardest so For you sure. can go ahead and start your English and math courses without having to do remedial. Yeah. Unfortunately, I had to do remedial. And yeah, they was not nice. They tried to offer you a 7 a.m. math class. Come Ooh, on. Come that's on, what you get. That's what on, you get for having no. to take a remedial class. A remedial math class. And it was at 7 a.m., I think Monday through Friday. Oh. <laughs> it was harsh. It was oh, harsh. Oh, man. So, you know, in that aspect, by the time I did go to, to register, like all the 
available math co- courses that you wanted to take at a reasonable hour were gone. So mm. all that was left was like 7 a.m. When first starting, I kind of just took what they kind of gave me. It was tough. Freshman year was tough. <laughs> <laughs> I remember taking, you know, African American studies, Latin dance, just there were things that, you know, I wanted to try and enjoy, you know, different PE courses that we wanted to try. So, and just things I wanted to learn about and got exposed to that I was like, oh, I never would have thought that, that would even be interesting. Mm. So that was pretty cool. But make sure you read your your course manual. Yeah, your course descriptions. Read the stuff. course descriptions. <laughs> yeah, because and, I'm... And talk... So two things. Read your course descriptions, talk to people who have taken the mm-hmm. classes, and meet with your counselors. Yeah. Meet with your <laughs> guidance counselors before you schedule to take a class because you may think it's about one thing, and then you find out that it ain't nothing about what As you As you're sitting in there and can't drop it, and you're like, dang right? it. And you got to make sure also that the course satisfies your graduate requirements. Because you could mess up and take a course thinking that, hey, I'm going to take this class. And then mm-hmm. find out that those units don't apply to your degree. And that's just one extra class that you yep. took that you didn't have to. Unless, of course, you just want to learn the material. Yeah. Which is fine. If you got money to spare, then hey, Basically, do what you do. If you got a few thousand dollars exactly. to spend. <laughs> All right. Jobs. Mm. So for me in college, I did not work my freshman year. And I probably should have because my pops was trying to give me literally $100 <laughs> extra, $100 extra a month. What's a up, month. dad? What's up, dad? Pops. But I had a whole $100 and 50 of that, might I add, went to my cell phone that they didn't know that I had. So <laughs> Ooh. I had, Ooh. you know, Truth $50. That I had to make work for the whole month. I was struggling. Struggling. <laughs> Not, Not struggling, struggling. but struggling. <laughs> Luckily, I had a meal plan. It didn't work on the weekends. But, hey, top ramen cup of noodle. College students' best friends. Sophomore through junior year, I did work. Um, like I said, I was able to schedule my courses, my classes, basically, um, on two days. So the other days that I, I did work, and then the other days I had time to study. Hmm. Um, but it just worked at places around campus and worked at a restaurant and that's it. What about the bookstore? Oh yeah. I lightweight worked at the bookstore. I was, <laughs> I didn't really work at the bookstore. I was just standing there and telling people, leave your backpack right there. Roberts, right? Leave your backpack right there. But in that aspect, one senior year hit though, and I was taking up to 18 units. I was like, dad, I'm not going to be able to work if you want me to that's graduate crazy. on time. That's and I was crazy. still technically out of the four year time limit. I graduated in four and a half years. Which is still pretty good. That's but, pretty damn good, yo. But that also meant that That's sometimes really during the summer, I was taking courses at yeah. the junior college, yeah. you know, to try to, to catch up, yeah. to, to get back those units I didn't get from my remedial courses. And then also taking the courses for my major, because mm-hmm. there's there's two different things. You have your general ed, and then you have mm-hmm. the courses just specifically for your major. Mm-hmm. Uh, so taking those courses sometimes during the summer, because it's so much easier. Mm-hmm. If you can... Take your hard major courses during the summer because they have to compact so much stuff and it's it's so much easier. So I did that for a couple courses and then I was able to graduate. And for me, like I said, I was working pretty much since the time I graduated high school. But I was working at KFC. I was working at uh, Advance America. I had a job as a... Um, a camp counselor, after school program counselor, working as a uh, building supervisor <laughs> at the Lompoc Rec Center. Shout out to the Lompoc Rec Center. I was a building supervisor, aka janitor, <laughs> um, event uh, coordinator. Coordinate, not even event coordinator. We weren't even event coordinators. We just had to move stuff whenever oh, okay. events were, were happening. Man, we had to set up, break down, clean up, do this, do that, get this, get that, lock up. We had to do And at that hella. time it was what, like five something an hour? Yeah, it was minimum wage. You know, it was five thirty-five an hour. Mm-hmm. Um, and of course, when I transferred to San Jose State, I had a job working with Advance America, and um, I stayed working, working. I stayed working at Advance America for a little bit, uh, for about a year, year and a half, and then I was let go. And then I got a job working as a uh, academic counselor through a program at San Jose State called Gear Up. Shout out to Gear Up. Um, But essentially for me, working 
while I was in school was a must. Mm -hmm. it, it was a must. I had no other option. Yeah. It helped me save money. The fact that I was living with my grandmother for three years, rent free, that was in and of itself a blessing. Um, that was so helpful. And being able to save money to pay for school. Uh, my mom helped out when she could. She helped out, you know, trying to find places for me to live, trying to complete the FAFSA, even though I didn't receive nothing from FAFSA, <laughs> you know? So that's another reason why for me, I had to work. Got some grants mm -hmm. here and there. Thankfully, 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 and I think this goes for both of us, we never ever considered a student loan. Never thought of it. Never was a consideration. Big shout out to my pops for paying for all of my college <laughs> experience in life. Yeah. I'm so glad that we did not have to dive into the yeah. the the abyss of student loan debt. Now what about the social aspects? Social I'm gonna let you Oh, I miss college. I mean that's mainly what you kind of think about when you're in high school. Just think about, oh, it's going to be so fun. All the parties. Yeah. All the people you're going to meet. Mm-hmm. And it's true. It is true. <laughs> it's true. I it mean, true. like I said, when I first moved into the dorms, I met, you know, Tiffany and Tina. I love you girls. Two girls, you know, that I lived with. And we remained living together freshman, sophomore, and junior year. Um, because we just got along. Like, it, it worked out so great. And I, I don't know. I think it's means something like when you actually move in with people that you don't know mm. and you're able to get to know them, you know, don't have any, mm -hmm. you know, bad experiences with them. It, but if it works out, it's amazing. When it doesn't work out, that's a problem. Yeah. Um, you know, because then like sophomore year, junior year, or sophomore year, we brought someone new into the, the mix and we had knew this person and bad idea. I would say like, maybe not move in with your friends. I don't know. That's just my experience. Like, yeah, you always have that idea like, oh, let's let's move in together. But sometimes it don't work. Moving in with people I didn't know, it, it worked out so much better. And we became lifelong friends for that. The parties, you know, the meeting and, and bonding with new people, just hanging out on campus, the eating, just college was, I had, a, I had a great time at college. It was a lot of fun. Got to meet new people and experience new things. For me, being the fact that I was at a junior college for a few years, I was living with my grandmother and trying to be an 18, 19, 20, 21 year old young man and having a social life had its challenges that kind of caused some rifts between mm -hmm. the relationship between my grandmother and I at the time, you know? I was trying to assert my independence, <laughs> but I also had to be reminded that, hey, I'm living under somebody else's, else's roof. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, the early mornings of her banging in pots. <laughs> <laughs> waking me up, exactly. Waking me up with music and the sounds of breakfast being made. It had its challenges, you know, but I definitely appreciated it. However, moving to San Jose State and being exposed to the college life, that's where I still have lifelong- That's where all the debauchery happened. <laughs> <laughs> that's where the memories were made, right? Like Cherie, I'm still good friends with a number of friends that I met in those first couple years. Aunt Mays introducing me to a group of really good dudes you know, that I'm still mm -hmm. close to today. Uh, we still communicate, we still text, we still hang out, we'll still still see each other, our children, birthday parties, get togethers, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. All of the people that I met through the, uh, the San Jose State activist groups and the artists and the uh, entertainers and then the b-boy scene, the emceeing scene, the party scene, the hip hop mm -hmm. scene. For me, San Jose as a city, attracted me mm -hmm. but it was at san jose state where i was able to meet so many people that eventually became part of my life for many years still yeah. to this day you learn a lot about yourself <laughs> you know you really do you learn a lot about yourself in college mm -hmm. and you learn about relationships you learn about responsibility you learn about independence you learn about social aspects in which you're not really aware of until maybe you're around so so much diversity right it's not until you're around so much diversity really, where you really learn a lot about yourself and you're introduced to so many people from all over the world mm -hmm. you know and so many different personalities and so many different interests and you're exposed to so much that you had never seen before yeah. i definitely encourage people to go to college and experience that if not for anything else 
if not for anything else, experience mm -hmm. experience what college has to offer you from a social aspect. Yeah. Period. Poo. <laughs> All right, so what did you enjoy the most about, you know, <clears throat> either going from junior to four-year? So all the things that I enjoyed for my college experience from a four-year university to a junior college experience would be the social aspects, uh, the independence, and learning, learning about myself, you know. Um, I made some mistakes, you know. I made some mistakes uh, as a young adult, but you learn from those mistakes. Uh, you learn a lot about yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, you're exposed to so many people and you start to really understand who you are becoming. Not who you are, but who you are becoming. And then the individuals that you meet, the experiences that you have both on campus and off campus, mm -hmm. you might end up meeting the love of your life. You never know. What I did not enjoy what I did not like about college life, um, obviously, is the cost. College, in my opinion, is just way too much money. It's, it's such a racket of a business. Mm -hmm. A college education should not cost as much as it costs in the United States, especially when you consider all of the debt that is accrued from it. Um, it should not cost that much to learn, and it should not cost that much to have experiences Mm -hmm. and building a network. I mean, on top of that, there's not too much more that I didn't enjoy about college. It's definitely a, something that I value. <clears throat> I value a lot. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think what I enjoyed, like you said, was, you know, establishing those <clears throat> relationships that we've I've been able to maintain for so many years. Yeah, learning about myself, learning what I like, what I didn't like, being able to, to meet people from different walks of life, just different mm -hmm. ethnicities. And I really enjoyed that. I really enjoyed, like you said, the social aspect and just literally at one point, me and my girls were probably out every single night. <laughs> Ooh, I was tired, y'all. I was tired. I don't even know how we did it. I don't know how I did it either. And like I said, I really enjoyed college. It was, it is just a place where you learn a lot about yourself. And mm -hmm. that is something that everyone should experience. Yeah. To, to be able to say that we've we've met some amazing people mm -hmm. and we're still close to those people, yeah. um, that tells you something, you know, that that's very meaningful, I yeah. think, the relationships that we've established over the years. I love you, Kathy. Okay, there wasn't really much that I disliked. Yeah, maybe the cost, but, you know, fortunately my, my father was able to pay that for us, me and my younger sister. Yeah, I enjoyed college and what I gained from it. So. But thank you so much. You know, we will continue with this series. The next one will be touching more so on basically the costs associated mm -hmm. with attending, you know, a junior college or a four-year college mm -hmm. um, in California. Because since we live in California, we're kind of taking those averages and providing that information to you. Mm -hmm. um, if you have any comments, go ahead and leave those down below. Make sure to like, subscribe, share, ring that notification bell, and keep moving up with the McClets. We'll see y'all next time, y'all. <laughs>